I think that when patients are having problems with their posture, it's, it's usually one clue of a bigger picture. Very often we, we dig deeper and find out, well, what else is going on in their life and find out, you know, if their activity level has changed, if their mood has changed, if their relationships have changed. These would be uh, variables that are important when treating a, a person not just as a, a back or a neck, but finding out their whole story. We've seen an increase in patients who are working from home. They have altered mechanics. They're uh, maybe on Zoom a lot or on their computer for hours and hours and hours. I question if some of the change is related to the actual physical posture or is it the lack of dopamine and oxytocin that we get if we have actual real life social interactions. When patients are depressed, anxious, or stressed, that causes changes in neurotransmitters and hormone levels, which are the same chemicals which alter inflammation and our ability to heal ourselves, which that secondarily, especially over time, will cause weakness of the postural muscles and even degeneration of the spine. The first step is stop blaming the victim. If someone is already anxious or depressed, they don't want to be told that they're doing something wrong. It's not your fault if, if you have poor posture or if you have back pain. Instead, we should encourage you to, to start getting ambition again and getting more drive. Uh, getting back to rehabilitating, uh, connect you to, to people who can help, like physical therapists uh, and physicians who check the biochemistry and help you to stand up taller again.